Hey everybody, John chapter 7 today. Hope you've been uh, sticking with us on this and checking out these videos. I've enjoyed uh, spending time in John so far and, and thinking about what Jesus is saying to us and what John's trying to convey. And In John chapter 7 uh, was an interesting chapter to me uh, because as I read through it, you know, at first Jesus says, I'm not going to go to Judea uh, because the Jews are trying to kill him, so he's avoiding it. And then it says his brothers, in verse 3, his brothers came to him and said, you should be going. Like, if you want to be known publicly, then you should make yourself known to the world. And then, of course, Jesus says, no, I'm not going to go because now is not my time. But he tells them, but you're, you have opportunity every day to make yourself known to the world. And I took that as just a personal challenge that I should seize the moment, right? I should make sure that I'm using every opportunity that I have to talk about Christ and live for Christ and, and allow the glory of God to shine through me because we have opportunities daily to share the love of Christ with people and to be a light in the world. And I think sometimes we put it off and we say, well, I'll let the pastor do that. I'll let my parents do that. I'll let so-and-so do that. Or that's just not me. I'll let somebody else do that. And we, we make these excuses to, to not be like Christ or to not share Jesus the way we should or the way we're supposed to. And I feel like that's what these disciples were doing, the brothers of Christ. They were saying, you need to go and tell the world about yourself. And Jesus responds of, why don't you tell them? That's what I hear him saying. You have the opportunity every day to tell them about me. Why don't you go tell them? And so he just presents that challenge. And so, but then what I find interesting is that then Jesus sneaks into Judea. It says that he shows up in verse 10. He goes, not publicly, but in secret. Sneaky, sneaky that Jesus is, right? So Jesus goes in and sneaks in there and he hangs out for a while until the opportunity presents itself. And then he stands up and he starts teaching and he says over and over again that he didn't come in his own authority. He's not there for himself, that he's there to do the Father's work. He's there because God the Father has sent him there. And he, he calls it into question all that they're, they're proclaiming against him. He says, basically, why are you all mad at me? Because I healed somebody on the Sabbath? You guys do stuff on the Sabbath all the time. You don't even keep your own laws. Why are you, why are you trying to kill me? You, you basically, he's calling them hypocrites without actually calling them hypocrites. And so he's just teaching truth. Again, it's a hard truth. He even tells them that the world is going, the world hates him in verse uh, 7 because he testifies about the world and its deeds are evil. He calls them out on the sin that they're living in. And so this is a difficult thing for them to say. It's no wonder the disciples were like, well, I don't want to do that. You do that. They didn't want to be hated. But they knew the, import, the message was important. And I think that's sometimes, that's what keeps us from taking advantage of the opportunities in front of us sometimes, especially with our friends. We, don't them, we, we want them to like us. We want them to hang out with us. We want to be a part of that group, right? And so sometimes it's hard to stand against something. Um, probably what I would even say is sometimes it's harder to stand for something. And I think that's where the disciples were struggling a little bit. And that's where Jesus was trying to say, but you need, if you believe in me, you need to stand for me. Uh, if you believe in me, you need to proclaim my truth too, because you have opportunity every day to go out and to do that. And so then Jesus shows up and starts to proclaim this truth. And it's a hard truth for people to swallow. And as you read through the chapter, you see that there's all kinds of division. People are like, yes, Jesus is awesome. And other people are like, no, this dude's crazy. That division exists still today, right? When we proclaim the truth of God, there are people that accept it and there are people that reject it. And it's, it's hard for us sometimes to, to create that kind of division, but it's sometimes necessary to proclaim God's truth in that way. And so we have opportunity every day to proclaim this truth. And it might not make us very popular at times, but it's a truth that needs to be proclaimed. And it's a truth that needs to be heard. And so Jesus says, I'm not preaching my truth. It's not, it's not just about me. I'm, pre I'm here preaching and teaching because the Father has sent me. And if you would believe in me, he says, you will have 
water, the living water. He says, verse, verse 38, He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So Jesus is giving this hard truth, proclaiming all these things that God has given to him so that people can have living water. Even if, even if what we're saying is hard for people to hear, they need to hear it because they need living water, right? We want to save people. We want to see people live an abundant life. We want to see people live a victorious life. We want to see that. So let's make sure we take every opportunity to shine for Christ. And not wait for somebody else to do it. Because they might be waiting for you to do it. And it might not always be easy and it might be hard. And there's going to be some that, that pat you on the back and say, that's a great job. And there will be others that will ridicule you. You're in good company. They did the same thing with the disciples and with Jesus. But in the end, what we're offering is living water. So that they can have the life that God has, has sent Christ to die that they might have. So seize those moments. Seize the opportunity to give people living water.